All right, guys, what's up? What's going on? Not hey. much. We got uh, we got John here from Team MSO, and we've got Gabby here as well for Adventure Talk this week. Gabby, where are you at, man? I am uh, in Houston. I uh, actually, uh, as you might know, I've moved down here, but I rarely spend any time here, so I'm uh, in Houston by proxy right now. Where's your truck at? My truck is, is still in Virginia. You actually, you and Brandon Sheriff actually have my truck. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking good care of it. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, so you've been uh, When did you When did you move down to Texas then? Uh, July of last year. Got down here and yeah. uh, got a full-time job down here, but it requires me to travel a lot. So um, I'm based out of Texas, but like I said, I don't necessarily uh, quote-unquote live here. I'm, I'm I'm usually on a plane about three weeks, two to three weeks out of the out of the month. So yeah, but you'll be back here for some of the trips and stuff that we'll do, right? Oh, absolutely! I'm looking forward to it. I kind of get mountain fever here because uh, literally it's all flat. The highest elevation you can get to is about 70 feet. So I'm ready for some more mountains <laughs> in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> John, well, what about you? What are you up to up there, man? Uh, you know, just uh, doing the same same sort of stuff, you know, shooting, making photographs, and uh, got a little side project going on that we're getting off the ground here, uh, to, soon to be announced here in the next uh, couple weeks. We're uh, uh, cats out of the bag, but we're, um, you know, we're setting up shop here and uh, just west of Boston uh, building adventure rigs, um, partnering up with a good buddy of mine who owns a Toyota dealership, and, uh, you know, we're building we're building trucks. Is that one of them there behind you then, or what? Yeah, it may be. <laughs> yeah, so behind us we got our our 2019 uh, company rig, and that's um, brand new Tacoma TRD, and we're getting it all you know kitted up, and we've uh, we partnered up with um, you know some top top notch com- companies, uh, ARB, um, Alucab, you know Come Up Winch to say a few, and uh, you know we're we're putting together a pretty um, you know stellar group of uh, companies to work with, and we're going to build some awesome trucks up here. When are you looking forward to getting that started? Uh, next couple of weeks, guys. It's going live. Like two, three weeks, we're going to be officially live. Um, I've already started building some uh, customer trucks here, just word of mouth, so which is pretty exciting. Got a, a 2019 Tacoma um, full build going on right now with a customer. Um, started a 2017 200 series. Started the uh, suspension and uh, bumpers, uh, drivetrain upgrades, doing some um, gearing and whatnot. So uh, then we got a Forerunner that's uh, next up in the queue. So we got some got some cool stuff going on. Nice, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're looking forward to that. So I guess you'll do kind of a kind of a push through social media, and maybe emails and stuff like that to launch your website and stuff or what? You got it. Yeah. So we're live on Instagram right now. Um, it's, uh, Rocco vehicles, R O K O. Um, and then our website goes live, uh, in about two weeks. So that was your dog's name, wasn't it? Rocco? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of an interesting story. So my, my business partner also had a German shepherd who passed away about the same time that my, my dog passed away. And, uh, my dog's name was Rocco, which is R O C C O. And my mm-hmm. business partner's uh, Chinese, and his uh, his uh, dog was Coco, K O K O. So the name is actually a combination of, of Rocco and Coco. So we kind of okay. came up with a cool, yeah. And we kind of, you know, we're kind of vibing off the whole like German Shepherd, big, you know, family dog, very family oriented, loyal, you know, rugged, hardy, you know, looking nice. for adventure. So yeah, so that's where the whole name came from, which I'm pretty excited about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, New, England's, New England's hungry for some uh, for some companies to build some trucks up there. I think. Yeah, man. Yeah, cool. Um, well, yeah, it was funny. Last week we were talking and speculating about where Overland Expo East was going to be. Um, we filmed that on Monday night. Released this first pilot adventure talk on on Wednesday, and they. They released uh, the location of that, and Overland Expo East is coming to Virginia. 
Yeah, so I heard. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's going to be kind of interesting to have this close to home. I think Gabby's going to have to fly back from Texas for that. Maybe I'm not too yeah, sure. I was, like, I was like, that's you know, that's great for you because you only get to drive two hours. I still have to fly. <laughs> <laughs> you're just yeah, your drive just another twelve hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll I'll make it up there for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think pretty, a lot of it's. Go ahead. No, that's exciting. I mean, even for even for the Boston or like the New England people, like you just cut down the drive down to you know Expo by what five hours, so that makes it doable in one day. So that's great. I think that was smart. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty excited about the venue location too. I think they're gonna it's gonna be able to mitigate the weather a little bit better than it has in the past. So um, that'll be kind of fun to see how that all shapes up and. Um, of course, anybody that's into this kind of adventure lifestyle from Virginia is really super, super excited out, about it. Even though we've officially moved out of the state here, too. We're in West Virginia now, and uh, Gabby's in Texas, but it's, it's finally coming full circle. <laughs> um, yeah, Ben's not with us, too. Ben, Ben's working on a, he's working on a budget build, and I'm uh, making some progress with it. Ben's actually editing the show this year, so... We haven't really kind of announced what he's building, but he's working with some good companies. He's going to put something fun together, I think. Yeah, looking forward to that. That's kind of been a, a long time coming, I guess. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work to put it together. Ben, Ben's shooting the whole thing and editing the whole thing himself. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Any, any, uh, any other news in the industry that you've heard about? Anything coming to market? Any new products or anything, John? Oh, man, yeah. I mean, you know, there's always awesome stuff coming to market. I mean, Alucab's always, you know, up in their game and, and you know, looking at their product and releasing new, uh, you know, innovative items. Um, I'm pretty excited about ARBs. Got a couple things coming up. Um, the new Classic 2 fridge I'm pretty pumped on. Um, they uh, they kind of they stepped up their game, and they're bringing a new fridge um, to market that has, you know, full um, – like mobile connectivity uh, support, so you can be able to like adjust the temperature from your phone um, and look at all the parameters and get everything set up, which is pretty exciting. Um, the uh, the new uh, Max Tracks coming to market, I'm pretty pumped about. That's going to be pretty sweet with the the replaceable uh, treads, which is going to be pretty awesome. Um, yeah, man, there's a lot of awesome stuff coming to market. Yeah, I think this. This industry has innovated so much in just this last five years that we've been really kind of hard at it. Um, and companies are just kind of challenging themselves. You mentioned, you know, Alucab there. We obviously have some experience working with them. Um, but let's turn this adventure talk kind of towards that direction. We've got three different platforms just in these three people here um, that are on the show, Gabby, John, and myself, uh, where I have uh, Alucab kaya camper in the truck i've had a canopy on the truck before uh, before that was just a camper shell uh john's got there on his uh rocco vehicle there he's got uh the canopy camper itself and gabby's got a rooftop tent on top of his forerunner so what what's the big what, what's the big deal about a canopy uh a camper a canopy camper and you know and rooftop tents like what what what's a good fit i mean we we get a lot of people asking questions about that and then wanting you know john john can you talk about the canopy camper a little bit yeah sure um yeah so the canopy campers I, i'm pretty impressed with this product um you know as as you guys have seen my my other vehicles at tacoma that has a traditional canopy and then a rooftop tent which sort of you know that that offers a certain level of utility, uh, especially if you're carrying a lot of equipment, um, kind of separating the tent versus the canopy. Um, but this this new platform is pretty awesome. Um, it kind of shines up here in New England. It's a very low profile, um, you know, camper unit that also allows you to, you know, get inside the vehicle when it's really wet. You can sort of prop up the bed um, and have full standing height and kind of close yourself in when it's really wet. Um, but when everything's closed back down, it's it's a pretty low profile. Uh, platform, which is really nice for like New England wheeling, because as as you guys know, it's pretty tight up here um, in terms of the trails and trees and stuff. So 
um, it, it's it's been a so far it's been an awesome platform. Um, you know, the rooftop tent and traditional cap sort of offers space for you know equipment. You, you can do a drawer system and kind of keep everything separated. But of course, you're you know using a ladder to get up into the tent. Um, one versus the other is not necessarily better. It's just a different different utility. Yeah. Well, Gabby, yeah. in uh, three years. That's kind of that's kind of what I that's kind of what I was saying. What I was thinking is, uh, I mean, it's just a, I guess it depends on your lifestyle. If you know you want to go like like I mean for you with you know with your family and stuff, I'm sure the camper makes it very easy to kind of keep everything together but really for me when it's just me or i'm going out with one other person you know i kind of like the rooftop tent just because it's not as much to keep up with and i can be packed and ready you know in, in less time so i guess it just it really depends on the lifestyle um and there may be a little bias just because that's you know that's what i have and that's what i've gotten used to but you know it just kind of teaches you to not pack as much stuff as you would if you were in a camper yeah, well, well, Gabby, if you could, if you could build another vehicle, and um, what 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 sort of sleeping gear, cargo arrangement, what sort of vehicle would you buy? Would you do another sport utility vehicle? Uh, I probably would. Yes, um, maybe yeah. even another Forerunner. I mean, I, you know, I've liked mine, you know, so far, and it's gotten me everywhere I needed to go. Gotten stuck a couple times, but we managed through that. Um, <laughs> <On purpose. laughs> but, uh, pr I probably, I mean, you know, I'm, for a while there, I had my heart set kind of on a Tacoma cause you know, I kind of wanted to change the platform, but I, th I think I'm happy where I'm at with it. And I want to, I want to kind of, you know, use it a little bit longer before I commit to something else. Yeah. Yeah. No, I actually just spent, um, about 15 or 20 minutes here this afternoon loading a camper in the back of the truck. And I, haven't had the rooftop tent, the canopy, never had the canopy camper that John has on his truck now, but, you know, with the Kaya, um, you know, you can load it in 15 minutes and unload it in 20, and then you've got a truck for whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I was, Stephanie was out um, running some errands tonight, and I had Ketcher with me, and I needed to load this thing up because we got a trip. At the end of the week, and um, I had catcher here with me, and I was able to load that truck up in 15 minutes. So, and now it's packed and all ready to go. So, you know, there's a higher price point on that product, um, but if you want to have, you know, your pickup back when you're done camping, you can totally do that and unload it in your garage or unload it out beside your garage. So, um, it's, uh, you know. It's definitely the best fit for me as we've kind of been doing this all of this time, and it kind of creates an opportunity to carry the car, cargo, um, like you said, to pack for family. And when you're putting more people in a vehicle, it kind of seems to be a good fit. Uh, what about the weight on that canopy camper, John? How much is that? Yeah, so the, the canopy camper, I mean, it's a it's a pretty modest weight. I mean, any you know sort of heavy duty like old man emu suspension upgrade can handle it so the, the the canopy camper comes in at about 440 pounds um and then if you add an awning you're looking at about an additional 70 pounds um so it's it's pretty it's pretty reasonable um especially if you do a, a you know just a mild upgrade to the suspension um you know the the philosophy that we or i've employed is you know we've set up the suspension to sort of handle you know, the camper, the on, awning, and sort of the stuff that stays in the truck permanently um, and set that up. And then we've, we're going to add an airbag system. Um, so when we, you know, end up actually loading the truck down quite a bit with, you know, extra gear and water and fuel, um, you know, we will use the airbag system to sort of, um, you know, accommodate that additional weight. Yeah. I mean, even, even on Gabby's forerunner and a rooftop tent on top, I mean, his suspension is beefed out. He's got the heavy springs on his too. And, you know, he's riding pretty heavy there as well too, right, Gabby? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can definitely, uh, tell the weight when you're, when you're driving at higher speeds, but I mean, it still rides comfortably. It's still, you know, even though, even with the weight and everything, not off balance or anything, it definitely still rides very comfortably. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, like you said, there's some, 
there's some good products out there. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about the canopies, rooftop tents, and campers briefly just to kind of get people um, part of that discussion. So if you guys got comments, leave them below, and maybe we can revisit that in the next version of Adventure Talk here, either with Gabby and John or Ben and, or any of the other guests that we have, we can revisit that topic. But um, a lot of the things that we talked about are available through uh, John's new company there coming to market soon, um, and OK Four Wheel Drive. So um, yeah, all good stuff. Uh, we'll kind of take this talk in a different direction now. We, we get lots of questions um, through social media, through YouTube, or just generally people pulling Gabby over in a bar and saying, is that your truck out there? Um, so a lot of the questions that we get from people is, how do you find the trails that are close to you or close to me? How do I find that stuff? John, do you got, uh, do you got an answer for that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, up in, uh, you know, I can speak to sort of the Northeast and New England, um, mostly. It's a, you know, I've spent a lot of time exploring here. Um, you know, there's a number of ways you can, you know, you can find it. I mean, the most reliable way um, is simply to figure out uh, where you're at and, and, you know, go online and, you know, find like the town maps that, uh, you know, that sort of like describe all of the various like trails and road systems. Um, you know, the DeLorme, like the old school paper DeLorme, you know, atlases are still a great uh, utility, uh, especially in New England. They seem to be updated, you know, fairly frequently. Up here in New England, we kind of freaked out a little bit when Garmin um, bought DeLorme because we were afraid they were going to get rid of the paper maps. But uh, Garmin found uh, that, you know, the maps, like this traditional, like, you know, DeLorme maps were still very, very, very valuable. So they, they kept them, which has been great. So we can kind of you know, still use those. Um, and also like, you know, hooking up with local um, organizations and even using a guide service. I mean, you know, in New England, uh, as you guys know, I'm pretty tied in tight with Peter um, from Vermont Overland. So um, there's a lot of events such as the Vermont Overland Rally that you can sort of attend and get access to a lot of like trail maps describing, or not even trails, they're all roads, but just road maps describing like different you know, areas to access and, you know, difficulties and whatnot. Um, local clubs, you know, have, have great access to, to trails, but also just literally like picking up a map, um, drawing from point A to point B, and just checking it out and seeing what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Gabby, what about you? How are some of the places, um, you know, that you found? Obviously, you know, you've been – We've we've found a lot of these places on our own traveling down here before we even connected up with John, and then that's opened up a whole new opportunity for us with Peter and you know John and everybody up there in New England or even Canada last year. But what what's your experience to answer that question? How do you find trails close to you? No, I mean you know the thing with me is like I I don't uh, get as intense as you know. Some other people do uh, as far as like planning and mapping and stuff like that. I just go and start driving and then turn my, uh, you know, I just drop uh, breadcrumbs everywhere I go on my GPS and, you know, take it from there. It, it's, I mean, that's kind of part of what I like doing. What, what we do is just to kind of discover new places and I, I just take the easier approach, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, from both of your answers down to mine, I mean, it's a, for me, it's kind of, you know, the best of those both worlds. Um, the the value that I can find in um, exploring these roads on my own and discovering some dirt track or four wheel drive um, surface is it's it's hard to it's hard to explain to people how valuable that is to find that on your own um, and experience that as opposed to just hopping on a Set of GPS tracks and going and driving something else somebody somebody else has done. You know, um, a lot of the places that we've been, we've we've found through people and you know, growing up in these areas. Um, but the biggest thing that I can kind of comment to is just collaborating with people that are, you know, in the industry. You know, your Peter Ballers, John up in New, up in New England, um, the guys up in uh, up in Canada. You know, Virgil and Nick. I mean. They were kind of our logistics and mapping for that adventure up there. So, um, again, back to what John said, too, you know, 
putting it on a map from point A to point B, and then just seeing what's in between. And like Gabby said, dropping breadcrumbs along the way in your GPS app, in your GPS apps, and whatever you're navigating with, so that you know next time I want to go back and and travel that road again, you know where it's at. And then you start to build your own network of trails. Um, you know, there's and people people want um, access to a whole caveat of road, road systems that they can travel. The challenge with a lot of that is that some of the ownership of these roads or the surface quality of these roads, uh, the forest service installing gates um, is kind of unknown you know, moving two, three, four years on beyond when somebody originally mapped it. I think P Peter, if Peter Ballers was on this, on this Adventure Talk episode, he could probably speak to that. You know, so uh, roads open and close um, without sometimes even knowing, but, you know, uh, Google Maps, drop your points, take it from there, uh, use your in-reach, track your locations and stuff like that. That's how you find these places. Um, Absolutely. So, so yeah, that all good stuff. I'm sure we're going to get some more questions about that. If you got any questions, just leave your comments below, and maybe we can tag up with that again uh, next week. But um, one of the most most important parts of this adventure talk is uh, is our product feature. So for this product feature, we're going to um, showcase our beverage of choice around a campfire. <laughs> John, what do you got? A lot of it. What What do I got? All right, so. You know, I'm a New England guy. Like, I just, I'm a, you know, I love all things New England. Uh, so tonight we are, uh, we're drinking uh, Beekeeper. And this is from uh, the Burlington Brewing Company up in uh, Burlington, Vermont. Um, and this is a honey double IPA. And I, it's, might sound kind of gross, but like, it's not super sweet. Just a little bit, you know, hint of honey. Um, it's got the traditional, like, New England sort of like, you know, hop notes that are like not super bitter, but also, you know, kind of have some like citra, you know, sort of vibes to it. And it's, uh, it's pretty epic. So, so uh, Burlington Brewing Company, Beekeeper. That's my pick tonight. Well, thank, thank you for not showing a Heady Topper. A Heady Topper is a fantastic <laughs> beverage, but it's refreshing somebody from New England not showing a Heady Topper. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, let's, you know, let's face it, Hetty Topper's not, that's an incredible product, but, uh, you know, Vermont, especially Vermont, whatever it is, something going on in Vermont where there's, like, a beer scene that's just like none other, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Alchemist does amazing beers, but uh, there's a lot more going on in that state than uh, than just, like, the sort of more known stuff, so. Yeah. Go awesome. Farmstead, man. I'd, I'm, yeah. I'd go back there. <laughs> well it's it's a it's a mess at hill farmstead i mean you get there i think some of the people that went to um vermont overland rally when we were there last time they they purposely got there early to go to hill farmstead and there was like a two-hour wait just to get in there to get a beer or something crazy uh, to, to get uh, yeah, like a growler filled or something yeah yeah oh, hill yeah. farmstead's a mecca yeah. yeah. In yeah. fact, I can saw on I think on on Baller's uh, stories on Instagram, he was just there. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They the the whole gravel grinding like bike racing you know uh, season starts up in Vermont and um yeah he was up there doing the the muddy onion which is a really cool race that I was sad I couldn't be at this weekend but uh he and uh, Ansel Dickey who does the all of his social media stuff did like a whole beer tour started up there and like kind of wound their, their way down. They went to Bent Hill, which, um, you know, is another great brewery and kind of hit all the, 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 the micro breweries they call them. So yeah. a lot going on there. All right, Gabby, you're up. What do you got, man? I actually opted, uh, for some Basil Hayden's this evening instead of beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> Drinking Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, which I have been since like four o'clock. You time. manage it pretty well. Well, good. I hope so. I hope so. But <laughs> it's good. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Well, I've got a beer with me that I haven't had yet. I've been drinking another one. I won't tell you what that is, but um, this is. 
Deschutes, kind of like Deschutes the brewery, but this is a new, um, a new American Pilsner that they have, and uh, I haven't had one yet. I'm gonna pop it open and tell you if it's really worth it. Not bad, not bad actually. It's it's pretty good. Um, it's it's uh, it does have a fruity note at the end. And it's not overly heavy on alcohol. I think it's four point, yeah, four percent, twenty-five IBU. That's good. Yeah, it doesn't have a, doesn't have a strong aftertaste to it. It's really smooth. I guess I by the can I was kind of expecting something a little, a little fruitier, maybe a little springier, a little hop on the step for like springtime. <laughs> kind of going from kind of look at the can. Sometimes you look at the can and you think it's gonna. Tastes like that, um, but yeah, I'm happy with it. I'll, def I'll definitely drink the rest of the five of them I got. <laughs> is there such a thing um, as a as a beer sommelier? Do what? Is there such like a thing as a as you know how like they have wine sommeliers? But is there such yeah. a thing as a as a beer sommelier? Because that would be you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These these will these will get cold in the fridge, and I will drink them. Uh, it was actually warm until about 30 minutes ago, so before we started, I threw it in the freezer to cool it down. Um, but yeah, it's good. I mean, if you're kind of burnt out on IPAs, I think this is the way to go. That's a good beer. Um, but yeah, beer by the campfire, drinks by the campfire, I mean, that's kind of what it's all about. We don't like to try to keep that out of the video because we like to do it, and it's part of really <laughs> what we get out there and have fun doing. So um, yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. I mean, what do you, if you guys can make it next week, I mean, what, what are some things that you guys get questions about that you think we should talk on the show about? I would say, you know, I get a lot of people that are like, you know, asking if this is something we do full time or, you know, or is it something that can be sustainable? And I don't know. I've gotten, I've gotten that question quite a bit. It's like, you know, how do you guys, it seems like you guys do this all the time. I was like, no, we actually, you know, do have, you know, full-time jobs that, you know, we take care of and other parts of our lives, but that's kind of our vacation. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I, John can probably speak to that too. I personally have gotten that question a lot. Um, I kind of want to keep answering the question, but I think we should save it for next week. I mean, that we can go on and on for that one for a while I, um, and just talk about kind of what drives us. I think that, I think that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, John, you got anything? <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, right along those same lines, I get that question a lot, definitely. Um, you know, and I, I get a lot of questions just about gear. I mean, people are super pumped about hearing about, you know, products and, and uh, you know, what, what, what's out there to, like, you know, sustain us in the backcountry and, uh, you know, make us comfortable and allow us to sort of explore. So, yeah. All right, well, thanks, Gabby and John, for taking some time away from your family here tonight and uh, joining us. Um, more to come from John with Rocco Vehicles. Uh, maybe you'll give us an update on that next week, and uh, Gabby can tell us where his um, GPS location is next week. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere different, I'm sure. Somewhere, Actually, somewhere in the 50 states. Yeah, we might we might have to pick another night to do it. We'll be on a we'll be on our first guided trip of the year here this weekend, which will be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah especially, make it, but you guys have a good time. Enjoy well, it. your truck's going to be there, but you won't. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. No special thanks to OK Four Wheel Drive, Cooper Tire, again, Adventure Imports, uh, Midland USA, as always, for our comms and our trucks. Garmin Outdoors, again, happy to be working with them again this year. And uh, Blue Jeans for technical support on this Adventure Talk episode. Um, thanks, everybody. Catch you next week. Thank you, guys. But I ain't complaining and I damn sure ain't too proud.